When you have a tremendous multi-year theme like the domestic oil and gas renaissance, a story that's so powerful and so long-lasting that I wrote about it in Get Rich Carefully, there's often an expectation that a rising tide will lift all ships. In other words, you might think that all the companies who have exposure to the booming U.S. oil plays, I'm talking about like the Bakken, the Eagle for the Niobrara, Permian Basin, they should see their stocks climb higher over time. But in reality, that's not the way it works. Even the greatest theme can have laggards that fall behind the rest of the industry. I want you to consider Northern Oil and Gas, NOG, a pure play on North Dakota's Williston Basin, the area that includes the Bakken Shell that we like so much. While most of the Bakken names have been on fire over the last three years, for example, Continental Resources is up 72% over that period, Northern Oil and Gas stock has been nearly half. So what's the problem here? Can it be fixed? North o Northern Oil and Gas has an unusual business model. When I look through the filings, it's very interesting. It should be compelling. The company controls 187,000 acres across North Dakota and Montana. They've participated in over 2,000 wells since 2006, but they don't do any of the drilling themselves. Basically, they put up capital to take a minority interest in wells drilled by other companies, like EOG, like Continental Resources. If NOG pays for 10% of the cost of the well, then they get 10% of the production. And under this arrangement, the company has had leasehold interest in a fifth of the wells that have been permit permitted and drilled in North Dakota since 2006. The idea here is that Northern Oil and Gas is sort of like an ETF that gives you exposure to all sorts of oil wells all over the Williston Basin. But in practice, the stock has dramatically lagged the Bakken operators that do the own their drilling. When the company last reported a month ago, it missed Wall Street's earnings estimates by five cents off a 27 cent basis. And now there are some concerns that the balance sheet might be overstretched while the drilling uh, that NOG is exposed to seems to have gotten off to a slow start, at least this year. So is Northern Oil and Gas a broken company with a business model that's just less appealing than your typical exploration production play? Or is this merely a broken stock that gives you a chance for a powerful rally to catch up? Let's dig in with Mike Rieger. He's the chairman and CEO of Northern Oil and Gas. Learn more about his company and where it is headed. Mr. Rieger, welcome to Mad Money. Thanks for having me, Jim. Thanks. Okay, we're, you know, candidly, because we've been up at the Bakken, uh, always looking for bargains there. We noticed your stock, we noticed it's come down, but we've noticed that you have tremendous production growth, 145% compound annual since 2008. Trying to figure out the disparity, is it that people just don't understand the model? Yeah, I think the biggest misunderstanding, Jim, is that that they don't believe that Northern has control over its drilling activity and its uh, capex. And really, uh, the opposite is true. As long as the Bakken is being actively developed, Northern's acreage is going to be actively developed. Our 187,000 acres are in the core of the place. So we've seen a tremendous amount of the, uh, of the activity since, uh, since 2006. We've been in, like you said, 2,000 wells since, uh, since the play kicked off in 2006, which is over 20% of all the wells in the play. And so as long as activity in the Bakken remains robust, Northern's activity is going to re remain robust. The other issue is that the, the thought that we don't have, our, have control of our, of our drilling capex. Well, in fact, Northern, as a non-operator, doesn't share the same long-term rig contracts and long-term pressure pumping contracts. So we actually have the ability to be more nimble on our capex, and we can, based on commodity prices and returns, we can increase or decrease our, um, our, our capex deployed. So in other words, if the company plan to spend $430 million this year on capex and you don't have enough money, you can cut that back? Yeah, absolutely. But Jim, we have plenty of uh, we have plenty of liquidity to keep drilling. We have a four hundred and fifty million dollar borrowing base. Uh, only seventy five million of that was drilled at the end of uh, at the end of the year or, or was deployed at the end of the year. And uh, next week, we're expecting another borrowing base increase. We'll get up to five hundred million. And so we have plenty of liquidity. That's over four hundred million dollars in dry powder to keep drilling in the Bakken. And this year, we expect about to have a, a roughly a hundred million dollar capex um, deficit. Um, relative to cash flow. So we have got plenty of liquidity to continue to drill. But what we're really going to do in 2014 that's different than 2013 in the past is we're going to be more selective with the wells we participate in. We're going to high grade our capex and, and we believe our returns are going to continue to go up. Is it possible that some of your wells just weren't as good as the average well in the bucket? Well, in 2011 and 2012, you saw the rigs move out to the, the fringes of the play to hold acreage. You saw some of the operators out there on the edges, and they left the core of the play in Montreal County and McKinsey County uh, to, go, to go test new areas. And what we've seen in the last year is that the rigs have really come back into the core, and our infill drilling and the, and the downspacing we're seeing in the core is really going to be driving our production growth and returns. The wells are getting better because the, 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 the completion designs are getting better. 
The, uh, the costs are going down. The, the areas that they're drilling currently are in the core. Most of our drilling right now is in Montreal County and McKinsey County, which is the core of the place. So right. some of the wells that we were adding in 2011 and 2012 didn't have the same rates of return that we think we're going to be seeing in, in 2014. Now, you have a very big uh, disparity between your net asset value and where the stock is trading. I know it's unconventional to think that, a, that an oil driller should necessarily buy its own stock back, but the, how do you close the disparity here? Well, I think what, we've, what we announced this morning is that we've now acquired 5% of our stock back. And, and what's unique about uh, Northern's current market cap, or our enterprise value, in fact, is, is actually below our, our PV10. And we have a core high-grade acres position in the Bakken. It's literally unheard of that an oil company should trade below PV10. And so if you take our PV10, our, our debt-adjusted PV10 per share, it should be fi it's $15.50 per share. And we're currently trading about $13.50 a share. So, and last year we added $3.50 per share in, in PV10. So for us to be trading below PV10 is really unheard of, and that's the most frustrating part, Jim. I totally understand, because that is what confused me. That's one of the reasons why I wanted you on, because I don't understand the disparity, and I want our viewers to try to figure it out, because you've given us the present value, you've told us where you are, and, let, and you've bought back stock. So let's uh, take a look, see if this isn't one that should play catch-up. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show, sir. Thanks Terrific to see you. Thanks for having me, Jim. Yeah, it's pre appreciate it. Thank okay. you. That's Michael Rieger. He's the chairman and CEO of Northern Oil and Gas. There is a terrific presentation, by the way, that I got the March 2014, one step ahead of the drill bit. I want you to try to understand the story. Don't take it from me. Read the documents. Stay with Kramer.